All right, so this is gonna be a video all about reverse power rule. Basically, what we're trying to find in this video is this right here. So we're trying to solve this right here. The C is a constant, so if there was some constant times a power function, in this case it's just x to the n, and you're doing the antiderivative of it, that's what this symbol means right here, you're finding the indefinite integral or the antiderivative of this function right here with respect to x, that's what we're trying to find here. And it's very abstract, there's no numbers attached to all this, it's just a bunch of variables and constants. So we're basically trying to figure this out. What does this simplify to? Now you can figure this out with guess and check, but I thought it'd be cool to derive this whole thing using some basic calculus, and it kind of just shows where this formula comes from. So to do this, just like with anything we're trying to figure out in math, we're gonna start with something that we actually do know, and then try to morph that into something that we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for this thing right here. All right, so to start with, I'm going to use this derivative right here. So it's the derivative of some constant times x to the n, so some power function with respect to x. So we're gonna actually use the regular power rule to figure out this reverse power rule over here. Now this should be a review, but the derivative of some constant times x to the n, you're just gonna use power rule. So that means you have to bring that variable down, so then you're gonna get n times c, because c is just a constant multiple, you keep it, and then you have to minus one from the power. Okay. This is just regular power rule. If you need a review on this, you might want to look back at previous videos to, to understand where this formula comes from. But so far, all I've done right here is just regular power rule with derivatives. We're trying to do reverse power rule with antiderivatives, again, with this thing over here. Next thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by dx. So you're going to end up with dcx to the n is equal to ncx to the n minus 1 dx. Okay, from here, I can get rid of these this d and this dx here by doing the antiderivative of both sides. Okay, when you do that, this antiderivative symbol and the d are going to cancel out and you're just going to end up with cx to the n is equal to. Now, n and c are constants and just like with derivatives, antiderivatives, the constants, in this case constant multiples, can, can actually be pulled out in front of the integral symbol and you'll end up with something like this, okay? Now this kind of looks similar to what we're looking for. This part right here looks similar to this thing right here, okay? Except for we have x to the n minus one versus just the x to the n. We want it to just be x to the n. We actually want it cx to the n, so I need to put this c back inside actually. But it doesn't matter because I'm actually gonna restart this entire problem with the fact that I want this n minus one right here to be an n. So what I'm gonna do is rig this system to make it where it spits out an n over there no matter what. Now how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna start with this thing up here. Instead of doing the derivative of cx to the n, I'm gonna do the derivative of cx to the n plus one. So I'm basically multiplying it by x and then taking the derivative. Now what that is gonna end up doing, if you use power rule again, it's just gonna be n plus one, because now this time you're bringing the n plus one down, times c times x to the n. Okay, now we have that x to the n that we're looking for. So now what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by dx again. So this is going to cancel here. Okay, now from here, I'm going to do the antiderivative of both sides again. So this antiderivative here, antiderivative here. All right, so this and this d are going to cancel, and you're going to end up with cx to the n plus 1 is equal to. All right, this n plus 1, I'm just going to put that in front of the integral symbol. It's just a constant multiple. And then we're going to have the integral of cx to the n dx. This is actually what we're looking for here, because right up here I said that's the whole point of this video, is to figure out what the antiderivative of a power function is when there's a constant multiple in there. So in order to figure that out, what we're going to do, we're going to have to divide by n plus 1. And we're going to do that to both sides. This is going to cancel, and this is going to cancel. One thing we do need to add in here is a constant of integration. So we're going to add a plus c here to this side. Because we did this antiderivative, we are going to need to have that constant of integration that was discussed in a previous video. It'll make more sense why we have that plus c in a little bit when I show you some examples. But for now, let's just have the plus c there. And this ends up solving what we were actually looking for. So now you end up with the antiderivative of a constant times a power function is equal to a constant times a power function plus one divided by n plus one plus that c. So then you end up getting 
the reverse power rule, which is the whole point of what we're trying to solve in this video. So it's basically the opposite of what we were doing before with power rule. If I did the derivative of this thing right here, you would end up with bringing the n plus one down, the constant stays, you minus one from the power, and then you're still dividing by n plus one. The derivative of a constant would be zero, so you're just gonna do plus zero here. And then if you notice, certain things are gonna cancel here, and you end up with cx to the n. So if you do the antiderivative of this part right here, you end up getting this cx to the n, which is the whole point of it. So it proves that this actually ends up working out, and it proves reverse power rule. The next video, I'm gonna show some examples of using reverse power rule just to kind of cement this in a little bit more. So that's reverse power rule. If you have any questions about anything in this video, let me know.